All right, thank you all. It's, it's quite an honor to be here. I mean, these talks have been, have been just spectacular so far, and I'm thrilled to share with you the joy that I get every single day when I come to work and I get to explore space day in and day out. Um, I'm, folks probably recognize this image. I'm sure we're all familiar with probably the most audacious endeavor of human um, space exploration to date, the Apollo missions to the moon. Um, these were tremendously successful missions. We still are reaping the scientific benefit of them um, as we continue to analyze the 380 kilograms of rocks and soils that the astronauts brought back. Um, just a fantastic, uh, fantastic, fantastic endeavor. Um, and since then, we've made great uh, advances in human exploration with the, with the space shuttle uh, program and the space station program. Um, unfortunately, though those astronauts in those programs were still confined to low Earth orbit. Um, and now we know the uh, space shuttle itself is, th that program's defunct, as chronicled very nicely in this award-winning book by uh, UT English professor Margaret Lazarus Dean, Leaving Orbit. Um, but what you might not be quite as aware of is that NASA and other space agencies across the globe have been busy exploring the entire solar system over the past decade. This is a chart that's pretty complicated, but each line on this chart um, represents a spacecraft mission to another planet. So a bunch of them around the moon there in the center, Mars, Venus, um, to the outer solar system. I'm not sure why these, these slides are advancing on their own, um, but that's fun. Um, so, um, so we've had this great reconnaissance of our solar system all the way from Mercury, the, the innermost planet out um, far beyond um, Pluto itself. We've, we've really um, explored the entire solar system. Um, and you may be familiar with some of the most exciting recent results, the um, New Horizons flyby of, of Pluto. We got to see Pluto up close for the first time last July um, here on the, on the left of the screen. These are mountains of water ice floating on glaciers of nitrogen ice. It's so cold out at Pluto. Um, the Mars rovers have been um, returning spectacular images of Mars, showing us the, the really critical role that water has played in Mars history. Um, and one of my favorites, um, Titan, the largest moon of Saturn, the Cassini mission, the Huygens probe, um, revealed these river systems on, on Titan that really resemble river systems on Earth. But Titan's so cold that the, the liquid flowing in those rivers is liquid methane not water. In fact, the bedrock is, wa is solid water ice. Um, NASA is about to launch another mission, um, the OSIRIS-REx mission. This is close to my heart. This is the first mission that I've been on the science team of, so I'm really excited um, about this. It's been fascinating to be involved from the planning stage um, through the construction phase. We're about to launch um, just in, in about two months. We launch and um, looking forward to, to getting to the asteroid and, and studying the asteroid. Um, so this, the, the mission is to return a sample of an asteroid surface. Um, so regolith is just a name for the, the rocks on the surface of an asteroid. So we're going to grab a sample of, of this asteroid surface and bring it back to Earth so that we can study it in the lab, much like we've, we do with the Apollo rocks. And the, the large scale questions that we want to answer are, um, uh, you know, how did the solar system form? How did life take hold in our solar system? And how can we um, protect the Earth from future impacts from asteroids? Um, so it begs the question, of course, what are asteroids and why are we so interested in studying them? Um, asteroids are small bodies that orbit the sun, like the planets orbit the sun, except they're much smaller. Um, they're really pockmarked. We've flown by um, a handful of, of asteroids. Um, we can see these big impact craters on them. They're really irregularly shaped. They're not spherical like the Earth. Um, they're mostly rocky. Now, there are some metallic ones. But the, one of the things that's interesting about them is they never grew large enough to melt. Like the Earth got so large, the heat inside the Earth melted everything. The, uh, the metal sunk to the middle. All of the rocks were reprocessed. Um, so the, um, they, the Earth doesn't really retain direct signature of the material that it formed out of. These asteroids do. They're direct. Um, they, the, the materials that they're made of are directly the materials that the planets itself, themselves formed out of. And so studying these bodies allows us to understand our own formation, uh, the formation of our own planet. 
So where are asteroids? This is a diagram of the um, inner part of our solar system. So the sun at the middle, each of the light blue lines is a, a planet's orbit. So Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, then a big gap and Jupiter on the outside there. The green dots are main belt asteroids. Most asteroids reside in that gap between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. Um, the dots are, are, are larger than, are not to scale. It's not really that dense. Um, but you see there are a bunch of red dots in um, close to the Earth. These are called near-Earth asteroids. Um, so there are asteroids that orbit um, close to the Earth. These are the ones that have a potential to impact the Earth. But they're also the ones that are easiest for us to access with spacecraft. And so that's where, where we're going. The asteroid that we're going to visit, its name is Bennu. Um, its orbit is shown here on the right with the orbits of Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars, Bennu is in green, and you can see that Bennu's orbit actually crosses the Earth's orbit. So Bennu comes really close to the Earth. It's come close enough in the past that we've been able to image it with radar, the big Arecibo um, radar in Puerto Rico in particular. Um, three different times we were able to image it. The, the folks who do those, those types of images can analyze them and back out the shape that's shown um, in the middle of the screen there. So we know exactly what Bennu um, looks like. It's about 500 meters in diameter. You can see it in the bottom right there uh, with the Golden Gate Bridge for scale. Um, it orbits once every, so it spins um, on its axis once every four, uh, four hours and 17 minutes, so much faster than the Earth. It's very dark. It only reflects about 5% of the light that's, in, that, that's incident on its surface. By comparison, coal reflects about 10% of the light incident on its surface. So this object is darker than coal. Um, and its surface is made up of um, kind of loose, pebbly-sized material, and that's the material that we're going to bring back with us. Um, so how do we get there? Um, well, as a, first of all, when? Um, we launch on September 8th, so like I said, just about two months away. Um, launch is on an Atlas V rocket from Cape, um, Cape Canaveral in Florida. I'm very much looking forward. I've never been to a launch either, so I'm ex excited to see the, um, the rocket go up. Um, presumably successfully. Um, so the, the main purpose of the rocket is to escape Earth's gravity. So Earth is big. It's got a lot of mass. It's pulling things down. Um, the rocket provides the energy to, to get, get out of um, Earth's gravitational well and put the um, spacecraft on the right trajectory to the, to the asteroid. Um, as it turns out, you know, we watch Star Trek. Um, and people sort of zoom, you know, beeline through space to their, to their target. For exploring our solar system, we don't really do it that way. It takes a lot of energy to go straight, um, straight to a place. And so what we really do is we operate in orbit. So we put our spacecraft in an orbit around the sun um, and change that orbit however many times we need to until that orbit intersects the orbit of the body that we're going to visit. And the next slide is going to show a diagram of OSIRIS-REx's um, trajectory as it launches Earth, you can see in the white orbit, so the blue is the Earth, the red is, is Bennu, where we're going. We fly by the Earth after about a year that changes the orbit. So you can see the second white line is a new orbit that then intersects with Bennu. When we get to Bennu, we fire the engines again to put us in an orbit that exactly matches Bennu's orbit. And that's how we get to the, um, get to the asteroid. And then we spend a year um, characterizing the asteroid, trying to using our cameras and spectrometers to characterize the geology and the composition of the surface, trying to choose where on the, on the asteroid we want um, to sample from. And then when we have our sample, we fire engines again to put us on an orbit, a new orbit that will eventually here um, intersect with the Earth again so we can bring that sample back to the Earth. Um, so that's how we get there. When we're, um, this, this is a diagram of our mission plan for when we're at the asteroid. It's a little complicated, but we're broken up into phases where basically as, we, um, as the mission progresses, we get closer and closer sort of in a slow measured way so that we can study the asteroid in more detail as we get closer, but also to, um, to understand, to study the gravitational field of the asteroid. This is not a spherical body. The gravity field is, is actually kind of complicated, and we have to map that out um, in a lot of detail in order, to be oper in order to operate safely closer and closer. And it turns out that Bennu is so small, the mass is so low, that the gravitational field isn't very strong. 
So we'll, we'll never really be orbiting Bennu the way satellites orbit the Earth or satellites orbit Mars. We'll really just be station keeping around Bennu. And this diagram in the bottom right, or bottom left here, is an example of one of the phases of the mission where we'll take from seven different angles, we'll just kind of sit in space and watch the, watch the asteroid rotate underneath and kind of map, it, map the asteroid as it, as it rotates. Um, after a year of studying the, the asteroid, we'll pick a sample site, we'll go down, we'll sample, grab our sample, come back um, to the spacecraft, store it, and then bring it back to Earth. Um, to sample, to pick up our sample from the asteroid surface, we're never actually going to land on the surface of the asteroid, though. Um, the, the sampling device is, is at the end of a three meter long arm. And I have a video that will come up next, and you'll see that arm just sort of reach out and touch the surface of the asteroid. So this is a mock, uh, uh, an animation of the spacecraft. Um, and there's the arm with the little sampling device. When it hits the surface, there are nitrogen gas canisters that will fire nitrogen. Poof, and that blows um, this dusty, this pebbly material up into our sample container, um, which is the little ring at the end, that sample container. Um, we pull away, we sort of um, measure to make sure we got sample. Assuming we did, we put it back, and we bring the sample back to, to Earth. So that's a little overview of the OSIRIS-REx mission. Um, if you want to learn more, there are a lot of resources on the web. Um, the, of course, we have a website. The principal investigator, the lead of the mission, Dante Loretta, has a blog that he keeps up pretty regularly um, that you can follow to see how the, how the mission's doing. The latest one um, chronicles sort of packing the spacecraft up. It's built. All the instruments are attached. It's, um, it's been shipped to, um, from where it was fabricated in Denver, the Lockheed Martin, to um, Cape Canaveral. Um, there's a Twitter feed. There's a Facebook page. Those are going to offset a little bit. Um, there's a, a YouTube channel for the OSIRIS-REx Osiris mission where you can see videos like the animations like the one that I showed. Um, for educators, there's another YouTube channel called 321 Science, which has really nice animations for providing background on asteroid science and, and um, some of the technical issues that go into, into space exploration. I think they're really good educational resources. So. Um, I'll be around. Feel free to ask me questions, and thank you all for your attention.